Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Mike and tonight I would like to show you a part of my collection of Blu-rays and DVDs and this is going to be what I own from Kino Video which of course now is known as Kino Lorber uh, a great company which to me is second only to the Criterion Collection when it comes to the quality of what they put out and the, their diverse selection of films so um, yeah, let's get started. I'll try not to take up too much time. Going all the way back to the golden year of 1915, D.W. Griffith and his classic, if you want to call it that, The Birth of a Nation. Now, this is an extremely controversial product even today, probably more so today than any time in the, in the uh, history. But uh, I'm very glad that I have this. I've watched it once, and I'm not sure I will ever go through it again, but never say never, right? Made a star out of Lillian Gish, 1915. Same year this film came out, Theda Berra, A Fool There Was, her very first film, which was actually um, filmed in 1914 and released at, at the very last part of that year, 1914. But it's always, or most of the time, it's uh, listed as being from 1915. Theda Berra was a star overnight after she made this film. She had been a, a struggling stage actress for years using different names. And she just hit it big as the, the vampire, shortened to vamp, a woman who is so destructive that she just destroys men with her, her lovemaking or whatever. Um, yeah, Theda Barrow became um, one of the biggest stars of the, of the silent era. She made over 40 films, and of those, only three features are still available. And uh, I don't know, this is probably the best one to see. To, to, to learn about why she became so famous. Anyway, 1915. Now, 1916, once again, D.W. Griffith, Intolerance. This is a film that I've had for a while, but I haven't watched it yet. I think it's even supposed to be even longer than uh, The Birth of a Nation, but I think, from what I understand, what I've read, D.W. Griffith was kind of answering some of the criticisms of um, The Birth of a Nation by, by doing this film, which spoke out against racism and and all sorts of things so anyway i do intend to watch this at some time uh fine then we have the cabinet of dr caligari which is a beautiful eerie gothic expressionistic film from germany uh absolutely worth seeing next we have nosferatu the vampire which is also a classic and we have metropolis fritz lang wow what a great film this is. Someday I may upgrade it to Blu-ray and all of these things. I'm not sure. Haven't done it yet. Then here's another silent um, old dark house type film, The Cat and the Canary. Great fun. Great fun. Here is a Louise Brooks classic silent film, Beggars of Life, directed by William Wellman. Uh, she's, she co-stars along with Wallace Beery and Richard Arlen. Beautiful, beautiful dramatic film. And... Uh, the second film that Louise Brooks made in Germany for G.W. Pabst following the classic Pandora's Box, which of course is out on Criterion, this is Diary of a Lost Girl. And her first uh, talking picture in which she doesn't talk because it's a French film and she did not speak French, so it was dubbed by another actress. It's called Prix de Beauté, which means Beauty Prize, also known as Miss Europe, 1929, or maybe it was 1930. And here's a film called The Old Dark House, which is a classic James Whale film. Um, Boris Karloff, Melvin Douglas, Gloria Stewart, and Charles Lawton. Oh my God, what a great, great movie. Very bizarre movie. Let's get into some more of the DVDs here uh, in no particular order. Here's a nice little, little known film noir from the 1940s starring Robert Cummings. It's called The Chase. Very interesting film. Peter Lorre is in this. Um, here is a terrific Fritz Lang uh, gothic mystery slash film noir called House by the River. Beautiful movie. Carol Lombard, James Stewart in um, Made for Each Other. Very beautiful film. Here's a classic, well, maybe not so classic, but it's a, it's a great film anyway. Barbara Stanwyck, George Sanders, and Gary Merrill in a 1957 Film noir, film noir called Witness to Murder. Stanwick is always good to watch. Here's Burt Lancaster and Elizabeth Scott in a great film noir, I Walk Alone. Right? 
Elizabeth Scott once again with Dick Powell. Pitfall. Here is a nice comedy in the, in the uh, Bing Crosby, Bob Hope, Dorothy the More Road series, Road to Rio. Can't go wrong with these guys. They are always fun to watch. Okay. Uh, here's a film I watched just the other night for the first time. This is an Albert Hitchcock film, Under Capricorn, from 1949. Ingrid Bergman, Joseph Cotton, Michael Wilding, which um, is, is not among my favorite Albert Hitchcock films, but it had a lot of good things in it, uh, specifically Ingrid, Ingrid Bergman. And uh, I might watch it again, but it was kind of a kind of a letdown. Here is another Bob Hope, Dorothy the Moore comedy from the 1940s, my favorite brunette. Here we have a very fascinating English film, film noir, which is made to look like it was a, an American film, and they did a very good job of doing that. No Orchids for Miss Blandish. And one of the stars is an American actor named Jack LaRue, who is kind of a cross between Humphrey Bogart and maybe Ever G. Robinson. Terrific actor, and this is a very, very interesting film. Very violent, or it's fine. Very controversial. Carol Lombard once again. Nothing sacred. Beautiful film. Here is a film from 1961 or 62. It's an American film called The Children's Hour. Shirley MacLaine, um, James Garner, and Audrey Hepburn. And it's about um, two women who are running a school for girls, and they are accused of being lesbians. And it's it's a very depressing but very good movie. Here's, here's a film that I didn't know about until just a while ago when Kino put it out. Robert Mitchum in a film called Foreign Intrigue, which was sort of listed as being a film noir, but I don't really consider it to be a noir film. But it's a great mystery, very colorful. And it's always good to watch Robert Mitchum do anything. So here's a Canadian horror classic called The Mask from 1961, which is a 3D movie. Show glasses here. And uh, very colorful, very, well, no, it's not colorful because it's in black and white. But the, the sequences where they tell you to put the, uh, put the mask on, and which means put on your 3D glasses, those are actually tinted in color. And it's, it's really fun to look at. Uh, the story isn't so great, but the, the movie, just the visuals are terrific. Here's a classic um, low-budget horror film called Night Tide, directed by a guy named uh, Curtis Harrington, starring Dennis Hopper. And featuring, uh, let's see, Linda Lawson and Luana Anders. Very interesting film. Very interesting little film. Here's a, here's a film I made a video about a couple of years ago called Dementia, which is kind of a, a short film that, that it's really a silent film with uh, sound effects and music and narration about a young woman who's losing her mind. But it's beautiful to look at. Very, very strange. Uh, there's really just nothing else like it. So that's a good reason to see it, right? Here is another film that they put out that uh, they listed as being a film noir, and I don't really consider it to be one, but it's it's still a very good movie. John Payne, The Crooked Way. Good little mystery. And one more in that same category. William Bendix, Dennis O'Keefe, Barbara Britton, Cover Up. Very good little mystery story. Here is Elliot Gould in The Long Goodbye. Cool movie. Ah, for those Mamie Van Doren fans out there, raise your hands. I know you're all out there. Here is the Mamie Van Doren Film Noir Collection. Three films that she made in the 1950s. One is called The Girl in Black Stockings, and she does not play that girl in black stockings, but she's uh, she's in it anyway, along with Anne Bancroft. Um, Guns, Girls, and Gangsters, and that's something else called Vice Raid. Now, I, none of these films, in my opinion, come even close to being film noir, but they're all... They're all just really fun little mysteries and uh, sort of exploitation films, and it's always fun watching Mamie Van Dora. She is good in everything she does. She puts a lot of heart into it, and she's so beautiful. It's kind of uh, hard not to fall in love with her. Tobor the Great, all about the uh, famous robot from the 1950s, Tobor, starring a little, well, a little boy, a child actor named Billy Chapin, who was in, um, he was in, the Night of the Hunter. He's a little kid that was running from Robert Mitchum. Yeah. Vincent Price, Twice Told Tales. Nice little uh, sort of a horror film, but not quite. Um, the Train, starring 
Burt Lancaster. Thanks to my friend Bobby Gass who advised me to get this movie. I'm so glad that he uh, talked me into it. Definitely worth it. Here's a classic film. Charles Lawton, Marlena Dietrich, Tyrone Power, Elsa Lanchester, Witness for the Prosecution. It does not get any better than this. It's a wonderful movie. Jane Russell in The Outlaw, 1941. Very controversial for its time. Uh, now it's you, you wonder why it was ever controversial at all. Uh, controversial at all. I have a hard time saying that. Still, it's a great film. A lot of fun to watch. They shoot horses, don't they? From 1969, Jane Fonda, Michael Sarazen, Gig Young, um, Susanna York. Great film. Very, very depressing, but yeah, still good to watch. One of the craziest. Um, Overblown movies ever made, Duel in the Sun, starring Jennifer Jones, Joseph Cotton, Gregory Peck, Lillian Gish, Lionel Barrymore, Herbert Marshall, Walter Houston, and Charles Bickford. And it is it is a hoot. It's, it's very long, and it's just um, overacted to the hill by Jennifer Jones, who was totally miscast. But her, her husband at the time, David O. Selznick, wanted to, well, I don't know what he wanted to do, just put her in that movie, I guess, and he did. Love with the Proper Stranger, a film from the 1960s, which is very typical for its time with Steve McQueen and Natalie Wood. And it's very, very interesting and a lot of fun to watch these two great actors of that era together. Now I'm going to show you the Blu-rays. Okay. Here is a nice little low-budget, not very well-known horror film from the 1940s called The Undying Monster, which is absolutely worth seeing. It's not a great film, but it certainly is worth seeing, worth checking out. Robert Mitchum and Shirley MacLaine in Two for the Seesaw, which was 1962, based on a play, and um, it's it's a dramatic comedy drama, yeah, dramatic comedy drama, and it's nice to see Mitchum doing something a little um, less intense for a change, and they have a lot of good chemistry. Hangover Square, Laird Krager, Linda Darnell. George Sanders, absolutely fantastic movie. Very, very atmospheric. The Black Sleep with all these famous horror stars like, who do we have? I can't read them. We have um, Lon Chaney Jr. We have Bela Lugosi. We have uh, Basil Rathbone, Akeem Tamaroff, and John Carradine. Oh, yeah. And uh, Tor Johnson. Okay. Boris Karloff and Black Sabbath. This is the Italian version. Um, yeah, the original, the American version was a little bit different uh, in the fact that you had Boris Karloff narrating the film in his real voice. In the Italian version, they have to dub his voice into Italian, and they, they changed the order of some of the, well, the American version changed the order um, of some of the, um, the uh, three films, which I don't know why they did it, but anyway, so moving on to Dustin Hoffman, who is Harry Kellerman? And why is he saying all these terrible things about me? Very strange little film that I never saw when it came out back in the, I think it was 1971 maybe. Very, another film that's very typical of that time, that late 60s, early 70s era. Very interesting little film with Barbara Harris, who gives a great performance in this movie. Absolutely worth seeing just for her. Um, another little horror movie from the 1950s, Curse of the Faceless Man. Fun to watch. Here we have a terrific mystery from the 1960s, The Satan Bug. It's a mystery action film. Um, George Meharris, Richard Basehart, Anne Francis, and Dana Andrews. Great cast of actors. Prime Cut, Lee Marvin, Gene Hackman, Sissy Spacek. Terrific film. I'm so glad I finally got, got around to seeing that, all right? Um, okay, the rest of the Blu-rays here. Here's a little film called The Ghost of Sierra del Cobre which um, I had never heard of until Kino started promoting it. And it's um, Martin Landau. It, it's an interesting little movie. It's nothing great, but it's uh, very atmospheric, black and white. Here's another Albert Hitchcock film that's not terribly well-known. A lot of people don't talk about it. The Paradigm Case, starring Gregory Peck, and Todd, Charles Lawton, Charles Coburn. Yeah. Interesting little movie. I, I, would, I definitely want to watch that again. Highway Dragnet from the 1950s. Joan Bennett, Richard Conte. Wow, this is such a cool movie. Um, Joan Bennett, 
loses all of her dignity that she ever had as an actress in this film because she ends up uh, waist deep in the Salton Sea uh, sinking in quicksand. It's really interesting, but uh, this is great fun to watch. A lot of location shooting on, on the highway where they have the dragnet, and uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. Okay, The Thomas Crown Affair, Steve McQueen, The Faye Dunaway. I like it. Here's a classic for you. Fritz Lang, Scarlet Street, Charles Lawton, Joan Bennett, and Dan Duryea. Wow, what a fantastic movie. I'm so glad this finally came out on a really good uh, print. It's beautiful. And speaking of, we have Edward G. Robinson, Joan Bennett, and Dan Duryea in The Woman in the Window, another great Fritz Lang film noir uh, black and white classic. Just beautiful to look at. Great Western called The Way West. Starring Robert Mitchum, Richard Widmark, and uh, Kirk Douglas. Rest in peace, Kirk Douglas. Uh, another road picture, Road to Morocco. Okay, I can't remember if that was the second one they did or third, I'm not sure. And keeping on, Road to Zanzibar and Road to Singapore. This was the first one, Road to Singapore, 1940. All right. Um, here's a terrific Richard Burton drama from the 1970s called Absolution. Great, great film. Very downbeat. He plays a Catholic priest who's running a boys' school, and he uh, he's trying to, he well, he thinks very highly of one of the students, and he's hoping that this boy will go into the priesthood. We find out that this this particular kid is um, more evil than Rosemary's Baby. I mean, it's a very, very creepy film, worth seeing. And finally, a classic from 1959, On the Beach about a group of people in Australia who are waiting for this cloud of radioactive dust which has destroyed the rest of the world uh, to head down to Australia so they know they're all going to die. Fred Astaire, Gregory Peck, Ava Gardner, Anthony Perkins, a fantastic movie. I remember seeing this when I was a kid at the drive-in with my parents and uh, I'm glad I got to see it again. Okay, sorry it took so long. Thanks for watching. Uh, leave a comment and please consider subscribing. Thank you for watching.